And um, yeah, I was asked a question about doing the inner spiritual work versus going, you know, joining an, uh, uh, a political or an activist type movement. And what's the difference and what's better and what, what I would do and how I see the differences between them. And um, first of all, any movement that seems to have anger in it, um, and a lot of these movements, I believe, and a lot, a lot of these ideas or these parties or these things which are coming from a, a place of anger and wrath against others, wanting others to change because they're bad or wrong, I, I wouldn't join them because the energy field the energy field is, is motivated by anger and actually um, anger I would not say is a very very powerful field in making people change like if someone angrily tells you not to do something you might not do it but it's not very effective uh, and it just doesn't really create a, pe a peaceful uh, a peaceful resolution of things um, and everything has it I would say you could see would have a different vibration. Is the, is the motive coming out of anger and bringing the bad people to justice? Um, I wouldn't want to join such a thing because um, um, I would pro probably try and clear my perceptions and have forgiveness around the situation. If I'm not directly involved, then I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't want to join a group and get involved in the drama of the world. In fact, I'd always be trying to avoid drama. And unless, you know, sometimes things are unavoidable and you have to make choices or communicate with people, in which case I would transcend it and then make the communications with those people. So generally, I, you know, having done spiritual work for, for many years, I can, you can sort of, you can sort of pick up psychically what the intentionality of a group of people is. You know, and what what is the the major, but you know, like uh, you know, some people are coming out of um, some groups, like vigilante groups, would be coming out of essentially shame and projection. You know, it's like those bad people. Let's go and kill. Let's go and ki I don't know, kill the criminals. I don't know. So it's like, so the energy there is out of gr gr great sh um, shame, projecting their shame and and meeting out death to that which they've unresolved within themselves. So I wouldn't join a vigilante group, you know, because, you know, you, they'd have their culture, like in that vigilante group, their collective culture, which is like, let's kill the bad people. And the bad people are bad and we're just victims and they deserve death. And so we're going to take justice, you know. So I wouldn't want to be around that energy and be around that collective. Then you'd have, um, the, the, then you'd have um, the protest marches. And I think a lot of the protest marches are coming out of anger. You know, you'll, you'll often have like people throwing like tin cans at the policemen <laughs> and stones, you know, uh, and all kinds of things. So you can see the energy vibration of those groups, you know. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly join one of the. I haven't got against any anybody. I, I've got nothing against axe murderers or, or protest marches. You know, they're all free to do what they want. But I wouldn't particularly want to join them. I wouldn't see it as very conducive to to uh, to the st uh, to the the higher vibrations or peace or stillness so you'd have those um, then you know as you do deeper and deeper spiritual work you see there's more and more subtle hooks into different types of communities or political parties or it could be university groups and there are things which are just very intellectually curious you know groups but these can these can be very entertaining for the ego you know, it's like, yeah, I don't know, what, what, could be like, uh, what could be an entertaining thing for the ego? Like, um, I can't think of anything. That, well, it, it could be like uh, jigsaw puzzles or, or history. You know, let's get into the history of, of, um, of, of, of uh, evolution. So these things can, you can spend like years and years trying to get hooked into and find very interesting. But again, you know, for me, I wouldn't really want to join such a group. I'd really, uh, since I'm interested in enlightenment, it would be like, 
I, I see no conflict in going to the highest levels of consciousness, the highest, re the highest release of anything that's limited in th within me. And going. So I, I follow the pathway of the mystic. I don't say it's the only pathway to God, there's the pathway of selfless service, but I follow the pathway of the mystic, which is like, rather than go out and see what my ego thinks is wrong with the world and fix the world, I prefer to let go of everything within my ego that sees there is wrong in the world. So that, that is the pathway of the mystic. Uh, actually, as you evolve and you release, release everything that's identified within the world, you see the world differently. So, you know, as you let, let go more and more, then the world is seen to be different. Like often when you let go of your perceptions or your unforgiveness in the world, you, see that the, you start to see that the world is perfect the way it is. It doesn't need any interference. You, you could start to see things like the world is, is uh, either... Like Ramana behind me said that the world is... Anyway, you want to save the world, it's just a projection in your mind that you want to save. You know, you might as well let go of the projection and see if there's still anything that needs to be saved once you've released your projection. And you'll see, you also know, notice that everyone is, sees a different world and sees something different. But it's, it's more, um, you know, so here's the, th here's the thing. So I would, you know, with the work, like I've shared the work with uh, Hawkins, that actually... Anyone who seeks enlightenment, for me, it is, it is the highest calling. Uh, with, it's that not everyone is called to that. Um, some people just want to have a, you know, a normal life, and just, which is fine. But the call for enlightenment, to fully release all the blocks to truth, to realize the limitless eternal self, for me, is the highest calling. And actually, I, it's not like this non-integrity. It has to be resolved, you know. Like people say you're lazy, people might say you're extreme, people might say what are you doing blissed out sitting in your room not even watching TV. But, um, but um, you know, so the, you're not going to get any acknowledgement from the world, probably not going to get any acknowledgement from your mother, uh, probably <laughs> not going to get any acknowledgement from your workaholic colleagues and friends. You know, I've just earned X million pounds and um, and I've got a new Ferrari, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> so you're probably not going to get that kind of recognition from the world. But actually, enlightenment, actually, you just let those go. Those are meaningless, actually. Money, um, what people think of you, how productive you are. And in fact, you become the greatest blessing. In fact, if you transcend the ego, uh, if you become a, like a living Buddha or a living Christ, just your presence on the, on the earth without you doing anything. You can just sit, sit alone in your room and that will be literally uh, balancing out, uh, balancing out uh, thousands, if not million, actually millions of people. And it just emits. Why does, it, why does that work? Because we're all connected. But everyone is like a cloud. It's like people in deep addiction are like black clouds. And then people, average people are like white, white clouds. It's a bit of a metaphor, but anyway. And, and the enlightened are like the sunlight. And it's like, if the sun suddenly emerges in a room full of clouds, if someone was to fully release their ego in a, in a room full of clouds, suddenly all the clouds go down. They start to become more transparent. And uh, you see, the black cloud becomes a white cloud. The white cloud disappears into the sky. So that, that's the, the great blessing of realizing the true self. The enlightened teachers, you know, when you're enlightened, it means there's no identification with thoughts or body as self. There's a limitless presence. And actually, they, they tend to, you know, they can, they, they can manifest in different ways. Some of them seem to be quite active and some of them seem to be quite reclusive. So you'll have teachers like Ramana or um, uh, Ramana. And Buddha, Buddha wasn't that much of a runner around, I don't think. Uh, but uh, Ramana just sits in a room and just, you know, enlightened seekers come and he just speaks a bit. And you'll get people who might be moving around and talking a lot more in the world, uh, or seems to be doing more things. So, but there's no person that does that. 
there's no longer an, an individual identity, it's just the unfolding expression of divinity that, that goes through it. So, having been exposed to Dr. Hawkins' work, the, the, I mean, I actually, I actually was very blessed because it's like, uh, and this is one of the things he did with his work was actually did to describe the different um, the different layers of consciousness, and actually then it becomes obvious, you know, I mean, how free do I want to be? I mean, how free of suffering? I mean, the Buddha also said it in his words many thousands of years ago. There's only one place where you're free of suffering, old age, and death, and that is the state of enlightenment. I don't want, <clears throat> I don't know, other people may want suffering old age and death, and they're free and entitled to go through that. But, um, but there is a place where there is no car karma cannot affect it, um, thoughts cannot affect it, death cannot affect it, fear cannot affect it. Uh, the whole world is transcended. And in fact, in that place of transcendence, the whole world is in fact, one is doing, because there's no individual self, but you could say uh, conceptually that one now is being the highest one can be to do it. But you know, it's the paradox. You know, these things are like um, joining activist groups and anger groups and all these different things. I mean, I might join a <clears throat> Course in Miracles group or an Enlightenment group or a self inquiry group or a transcendence group. But any other, any other for me now to join. Uh, to join like, um, even to join something like a political party. I wouldn't want to join a political party, you know, it's like, the others are bad, we're the right ones, you know, it's like, and... So, does that answer the question? That's helpful, thank you. Yep, okay.